Dragon 1.1, which is my intermediate course. If you don't understand the basics of marksmanship, specifically to pistols, I highly, highly suggest you sign up for a 1.0 first. Um, sometimes the basics can be glossed over, and that is really what needs to be honed on the most for anyone, because that is the foundation. So if you don't understand your basics of marksmanship, specifically pertaining to pistols, then absolutely do my 1.0 first. It's not required, but if you don't understand that, then this portion of the sim, my series, my smoke wagon series, is going to be difficult uh, to understand the concepts. Um, not to mention, if I have others in the class that are more advanced, uh, you're likely going to fall behind. So, we'll get on with it. We're going to talk about clothing selection. We're going to talk about holster selection. Uh, we're going to talk about drawing from the pist from the holster. Excuse me, drawing the pistol from the holster. Some safety considerations. Um, multiple targets. Um, and multiple shots, right? So that's basically the overview of the course. So let's get into clothing selection. Uh, this is an open carry course. This is not a concealed carry course. So you should have an open carry holster. If you don't, we can accommodate by just tucking your shirt in. Um, but if you do, obviously you're gonna have to bring that. So clothing selection, you want your clothing not loose. Uh, you want it to be fairly tight. That way it's not getting caught up when you're going to draw. Um, and then for when you're concealed carry, like my smoke wagon 1.2, you want your clothing to be loose. So it's, it's the exact opposite when you're open carrying. So I have a, a fairly tight polo shirt on right now, and I'm going to I'm going to tuck it in when I do the open carry stuff. So, once I tuck it in, it's good to go. Now, let's talk about pants. Whenever you're doing training or whenever you're out and about, what I really hate to see is guys and gals in sweatpants or leggings that don't have any pockets. Um, <clears throat> Pockets are a wonderful thing. So, um, you should not be training with your leggings or your sweatpants. Um, unless, of course, you plan on carrying that way, which I myself, I don't wear sweatpants out and about. I definitely don't wear leggings out and about. Um, so, if you are, then by all means, train. Train with those clothing items. However, I would highly advise against it. I would, I would rather have something stretchy, like these Vertex pants, something you can move in, um, something with some pockets. Maybe, uh, maybe we're talking about putting, uh, you know, a knife in or an extra magazine or something of that nature. And then something with some belt loops, right? Because we're going to get into the belt in a minute. And then um, just something robust and rugged in case, you know, in case you have to get down on a knee or you have to do something like that. You don't want to rip your sweatpants. You don't want your sweatpants to be, you know, just kind of flopping or your leggings to rip, for example. So, yeah. I advise against sweatpants and leggings. So that's enough on that. Let's talk belt selection. Now, I uh, sell core belts as K-O-R-E. There are some really horrible knockoffs out there, uh, like Next. Um, but the core belts are very, very strong and durable. Uh, these, these, this one in particular, is a nylon belt, it's rated to eight pounds. You're not gonna need eight pounds, but it's rated to eight, eight pounds. And uh, it's really nice to have something that doesn't stretch, okay? 
Like your leather belts will stretch over time and they will form to your body. Um, these don't, right? They're very, I've been wearing this for about, I don't know, a year, year and a half, maybe two years. And it's slightly bent where my, where my backside is, right? But not like it would be if it was leather. Um, so you want something robust, some kind of, some kind of, uh, belt that is robust to carry one, your holster, and then two, your magazine holders. That's another thing you need is magazine holders. So with these belts, it's literally on a track and I can tighten it up as I need it. Obviously, any belt would work. I just really, really, really like the core belts. All right, so clothing selection, as we talked about. You want something fairly tight on your body um, so it doesn't get caught when you're drawing. You want a nice rugged belt. And you probably want to stick away from sweatpants and leggings. Uh, what I forgot to mention is uh, you shouldn't be in your cowboy boots on the range or pumps for you ladies. I guess some men. Anyway, uh, you want some rugged shoes or boots, okay? Um, on the range, it's usually uh, sandy or rocky or something of that, that nature. So I would steer clear from like running shoes um, because sand to get in your feet and it's just not comfortable. So boots or something of that nature uh, would be ideal. Okay. We're going to talk about the holster selection. Now there's several types of holsters. Um, this one is the holster that comes in the Canon uh, SC Elite. It's nice and small. It fits perfectly. It's got a little adjustment screw here. And uh, it has the plastic clips on the side so you can just clip it into your belt, which I really enjoy. Um, it's canted so you can't, on this one you can't adjust the cant. And so it would just basically, this one would go on my right side, just like that, which is fine. What I like about this one is I can also use my Canic SFX9 if I wanted to. I mean, it sticks out quite a bit, but I can still use it, okay? Um, when you talk about any holster, you want to make sure that it's not going to come out when you shake it. But you want it loose enough so you can draw. Okay? Um, this one I had made for my Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. Uh, it's literally form-fitted to the Shield Plus. Um, it doesn't come out. What I don't like about this one is that the, um, the attaching brackets are not like I can't take it on and off right they're fully enclosed so <clears throat> I literally have to take my belt undo it put it through like really mess with it uh, over my right side and it just it's just not practical to put on and off you know but if you're gonna be going out, going out and about all day um, uh, this probably wouldn't be a problem right Okay, um, this isn't a concealed class, but I'm going to show you guys some other holsters that may prove beneficial for like Smoke Wagon 1.2 or if you're just out and about um, concealed carrying. Okay, uh, crossbead holsters, excellent holster. Um, this is leather, it does form fit to your body, but if you sweat a lot, this probably is not going to be your gig. Uh, again, it has like the little metal clips that you can use to put on your belt. Uh, so I like that. And this is inside the waistband, obviously. Uh, but 
they are good holsters, but there's no adjusting the screw. Right, so it is what it is. You got what you got, okay? Uh, typically stay away from leather holsters, but if you're gonna get one, uh, they are beneficial for inside the waistband for sure. Um, this one doesn't have any kind of adjustment that you can do, but I can put my, my wife's 42 in here or 43X. I can put, if I didn't have this red dot on here, I could put the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus in there. I could put a revolver in there, which is typically what I use this one for anyway, is this revolver. Um, and it's really good. It's really good. It's versatile. Uh, I just stay away from from leather a lot, uh, especially when we're talking about there's Kydex that's just as comfortable as anything else. So um, this one's really good for this uh, this revolver. So holster selection is a big deal. Uh, obviously, you want to be able to shake it up and down, but if it's inside the waistband and you have a nice belt like we had talked about before, then um, you can kind of get away with something that's a little looser. For example, this 42, this Glock 42, this is going to come out if I hold it upside down, okay? But if I have it inside my waistband and I have my belt uh, cinched down, it's not going to come out, okay? Uh, probably the most important criteria for any holster that you get, whether it's inside or outside the waistband, is your ability to get to the firearm itself. So with, uh, with this one, I can, I can get to my, I can get to my Smith and Wesson really good. Like I can really get to it. Um, and we'll cover that in a minute. I'll put this on and I'll show you kind of drawing from the holster with this one. And the same thing here. Um, the difference between that one and this one is that this is, a, has a, uh, the brackets can move up and down. So I can lower or raise the firearm to my comfort level, right? So shooter's preference there. So that's holster selection. Move on to um, actually the drawing steps. There's four steps. Now these steps that I'm going to go over is more of a guideline than it is like an absolute uh, the steps, you can go from one to four real quick because there's four steps in it. Uh, or you can call it a three-step process. Um, but the idea is that you want to come center line of your body and you want to, you know, obviously point at the threat, whatever the threat is. Um, so step one is obviously you have to get to the pistol. Um, as you can see, this holster that I was talking about earlier is a little bit high for me because um, I want to be able to get to the dovetail, right? And I'll do some close-ups on this. But I want to be able to get to the dovetail and wrap my hands around it. Very comfortable. It's also canted a little more forward than what I would like as well. Um, I would like it more straight up and down, so I so I don't have to lean forward or move my shoulder so I can get a good grip on the firearm. So that's another little tidbit about holster selection. Um, now, if you like the cant forward, hey, by all means. I'm saying my personal preference is to have it more straight up and down, so that basically. I can grab it with my hand just like this. It's kind of awkward for my hand to do this, to go like that, okay? So, either way, you can still work it, okay? So we're gonna do some, we're gonna do some drills here. Now this is a four step process. The first step is to get to the firearm. So with your strong hand, I'm right-handed, so my strong hand is my right hand and my weak hand is my support hand, weak hand, left hand, right? Uh, if you're left-handed, it'd be reverse, right? Because you'll likely have your firearm on your left side. Um, 
you want to be able to get to the firearm, okay? But with your support hand or your weak hand, you want it close to the body, okay? When you do that, you're putting it in a position where you can get two hands on the firearm pretty quickly uh, in step uh, two and then three, right? You'll see. So step one, and let's say there's a threat and I have to draw my pistol, is I need to get to the firearm and I need to get this webbing high up into the dovetail. Okay, so yeah, bringing my hand to my chest or close to my body. It doesn't have to be technically on my chest. It can be anywhere close to my body. I'm just preparing for the next step. So here, and then two is here, okay? So back to one. I want to get high up into the dovetail, wrap my fingers so I can pull the firearm out and then point it to the threat, okay? So step one. And then here is two, and I'm going into two right now. Two is basically pointing at the threat, wherever the threat is, without me actually looking down the sights. So from two, this is like a two and through. Number two is two and through, because we're moving through number two into number three, which is where we're gonna meet these two hands, strong and support. Okay, so. I see a threat. Okay, see I moved to number two and then through and I'm moving, I'm already moving to month number three, okay? Step one, step two, step three is coming up and meeting, meeting the, your hands together as we talked about in Smoke Wagon 1.0 about grip, okay? So we're trying to meet these two hands together to start getting our grip into position, okay? Uh, we're also still pointing at the threat because we can technically shoot from number two and we can technically shoot from number three in a safe and a in fairly effective manner, okay? So one, two, three, I'm coming up. I'm meeting these hands together and I'm prepared to go out to step four, which is basically presenting all the way out to the target or the threat. Okay, step, step four is basically full extension and you're ready to fire. So you have to go through these steps in order to effectively engage the threat. Um, if you're gonna keep, like on the range, we're gonna keep drawing, we're gonna draw a lot, and you're likely gonna have to keep tucking your shirts in or whatever. Just keep them tucked in, anything that comes out loose or whatever, just keep them tucked in, right? So, one, two, three, and then four. Okay, that's by the numbers. Now, as I said before, you can move through these steps really quick. The idea is you want to be center line of your body and you want to be presenting to the target as fast as possible. So, in a faster speed, threat. Okay. I'm already having to tuck my shirt in some more. All right. Faster speed, threat. We're going to talk about multiple shots. Uh, again, another reason why grip is the most important. Without that, you can't do following shots very quickly or efficiently. Okay. Um, so we'll just cover grip a little bit. You want high up into the dovetail. You want to point this finger, this thumb on your support hand towards the target. And you want to basically move this thumb out of the way and cover up as much of the black that you can on the firearm, assuming your firearm is black. It could be gray or pink, I don't care. But you want to cover up all this stuff, yeah? And that's basically your grip. Now you have to go to the range and shoot to, to refine your grip and figure out what works for you the best 
But this is the normal grip of today. Not this, where you have your thumb underneath your support hand. Not this, but this. All right? If you're doing this, by all means, man, do you boo-boo. But you're not going to be very quick or effective. And if you're doing this, you're not going to be very effective and possibly not even very quick. Okay? So this is where you're at. This is where you should be anyway. So multiple targets, no, excuse me, multiple shots. Um, once you have your grip down, which we'll cover extensively, um, now your trigger squeeze, is, I'd say, is the second most important. Uh, and then probably trigger resets your third most important. And all the fundamentals. So again, if you haven't done my 1.0 course yet, sign up for that one first. Okay. So multiple shots. We want to be able to fire multiple shots with relative accuracy at any distance. The closer in it is, the faster you're going to be. The further out it is, obviously, the slower you're going to be. Uh, because your relative accuracy is diminished the further out that you're shooting, okay? Um, also, if you're in a situation where there's a bunch of people running around, again, the boulder situation, let's say, or whatever situation where people are just running crazy trying to get away from the gunfire, um, and let's say you're the person who is there and who can eliminate that threat and save others, then um, you need to be very switched on and very situational aware. So the more you train multiple shots, the more you understand uh, how um, capable you are, okay? So you might only take one. But you definitely want to train for multiple. Okay, so I am not going to use my support hand. I'm going to use my strong hand only just to kind of demonstrate the multiple shot method I'm talking about here. Now, there's a trigger, there's a trigger squeeze and then there's a trigger reset. Okay, so when I pull the trigger, it's going to cock the firearm for me and then there's a trigger reset. I'll do a close-up of it here in a minute. But that's all the further I need to come out. I don't need to come out to here. If I do that, and I'm doing this with my finger, I'm going to be less accurate and I'm going to be slower. Whereas, if I come just to where it clicks and fire, I can fire faster just by moving my finger a little bit. Versus coming off all the way off. Now that's with your single fire firearms. Um, if you're using a double action only, or you're using a double action single action uh, firearm, your trigger squeeze and trigger reset is going to be completely different. Which is another reason why you should go train. Um, and you should train pretty frequently. Uh, maybe once a quarter. Every three months, go out to the range. Cold, windy, wet, warm, whatever. Just go do it, okay? Um, and yeah, you should you should also fire indoors and outdoors because that concussive blast is uh, a little bit different of an animal indoors than it is outdoors. Okay, so again, you only need to come out a little bit. So here I am. I just need to come out that much. And we'll do a close up in a minute. Now, if I put my other hand up, now I can manage recoil better. Oh, I'm running out of juice here. Okay, I got some uh, more air in my in my uh, air tank. So this cool fire system, you have a little. Your barrel is actually your air tank, and when you fire, the striker. Uh, it hits a little rubber piece, and that little rubber piece allows air to escape, 
which causes the firearm to cycle. Super cool system. Cool part, right? So, where was I? Uh, yeah, so we're talking about, I only need to come out a little bit. I don't need to come all the way off the trigger when I'm doing multiple shots. Now, let's put it all together. Grip, okay, stance, leaning forward at the waist, being aggressive with my lean. I can really, I can really manage recoil on this. Now, the recoil on the cool fire is not going to be the same as the recoil if you're shooting live rounds, but you get the picture. Um, you can literally train really, really fast to get really, really fast and your relative accuracy improves over time because you're going to get in there, you're going to get aggressive with the firearm to handle it. Okay. Multiple targets and we'll do this on the range as well with live ammunition. Okay, so I've already cleared this firearm. I switched up firearms, holsters, but um, we're going to go from the draw and we're obviously going to see a threat, right? And that's going to be the immediate threat, the imminent threat, if you will. Um, we're going to keep our eyes on that target, on that threat, while we go into step one, two, three, and then four, okay? Then we're going to fire. If you have multiple threats, okay, you have to have some situational awareness. So that brings me to keeping both the eyes open. Uh, I'm right-handed and I'm right-eye dominant. So if I go to fire at this threat and I close this eye, I can still see this threat, right? But if I go to fire at this threat and I close this eye, I cannot see this threat. So keeping both eyes open allows me to have better situational awareness to my front, okay? So let's say I have multiple threats and this time that's the imminent threat. And then let's say I stop that imminent threat and then another imminent threat comes, right? So it looks something like this. We're gonna go through our procedure of drawing. One, two, three, four, and then I'm going to fire. And then I see this other threat. Now, when I see this other threat, I don't want to immediately point my gun at it because it might not be a threat. It could be something completely different, right? It could be a, a non-threat, for example. Some person who's like running away from gunfire. Let's say, let's say if you're in uh, the Boulder situation, at the supers, yeah? Imagine the amount of chaos that was happening. Put yourself in that situation, and now, instead of one shooter, let's pretend you had two shooters that were a threat, and you had all these people running around. So you don't wanna arbitrarily point your gun at anything, okay? You wanna make sure it's a threat first. So, I was here, I shot, I'm going to look at the next threat. It's my son. I'm going to look at the next threat. And then once I look at the next threat and identify that it is a threat, I'm going to move my gun to that threat. Now, it's very important. This is why I say grip is your most important fundamental in Smoke Wagon 1.0. As long as you have a good grip here and you turn your head or eyes, I'm just doing a very big exaggeration so you guys can see, and you turn your body and you put that firearm in between you, your eyes and the threat, your sights are going to line up. Okay? They're going to line up. So you're going to shoot this threat, you're going to turn your head, and you're going you're to shoot that threat. Okay? Whereas if you're here and you're looking down your sights, you don't have any situation awareness, first of all. But if you're looking straight down your sights and you kind of do this, you're gonna pass the thread up and then you're gonna to have to come back to it. Wasting time. 
Now I was going to do the, do the same thing on this side. Here, turn my head, and then to that thread. I see a thread. One, two, three, four. Another thread. Okay? At no point should you ever go like this. You should always look at your target before you turn. Okay? Look, turn. Okay? So look at something like this. Do it again from this side. Takes a little bit of practice because you want to turn your body when you know there's a threat there before you actually look. However, you should look at whatever the threat is to identify that it's a threat before you point your gun and then subsequently shoot. To cap this lecture off, um, Smoke Wagon 1.1 is my intermediate course. It's all about open carry, okay? Uh, it's just easier to explain drawing. It's easier for me as an instructor to see if, to make sure that the student's not going to shoot themselves or me or damage anything that's around. Okay, so uh, open carry, multiple shots, multiple threats. Uh, those are the things we're going to be kind of focusing on during the, the during the range portion. Um, if you're more interested in concealed carry, that's fine. You sign up for my Smoke Wagon 1.2 course, uh, but I highly suggest this one before that one because there's a lot more going on there. Um, I'm not just talking about concealing your firearm. I'm talking about concealing your body. I'm talking about getting in and around vehicles. I'm talking about all of that stuff, uh, protecting yourself. So this is a progression. If you don't know your fundamentals well, well, Smoke Wagon 1.1 is, or 1.0 is where you need to be. If you understand your fundamentals and you just want to refine your technique, here's where you want to be at 1.1. And then my 1.2 class is talking about some other things when it comes to protecting yourself and concealing your firearm, okay?